Let me, let me take the fracking question um, and leave the, the other questions for the, the other two speakers. I mean, your point was, you had two points, really. Um, the first one was there was so much fossil fuel, there is so much fossil fuel, there's so relatively little um, clean energy. We're coming from such a small base, you, you know, how do you, how does that work? And the answer is, it's going to be a transition, but what we have to do is decelerate fossil fuels on an emergency footing and accelerate clean energy also on an emergency footing. And to tee up the answer to fracking, the problem we face is that there is an incumbency that is digging in, if you'll pardon the pun, and they're defending the status quo um, a large part of the incumbency anyway, not all, but a large part of it, they're, they're defending the status quo quite viciously. And this is no surprise to the neuroscientists who, based on their recent dramatic discoveries, you know, are finding this is what we're prone to individually and collectively. They call it technically the incumbency effect. Um, and if we have something that, you know, ain't that good, we will tend to value it over what we might have that is rationally better. And, you know, they, they call us predictably irrational in this regard. So you have a, a, a new embryonic set of industries that is struggling against an incumbency that is increasingly playing very dirty. You won't hear the gas people talking any longer about gas as a bridge to the low carbon future. You remember we, we all, you all used to hear that mantra? That was when they believed there never could be a low carbon future. What you hear at the moment is the gas industry talking about unconventional gas as the bridge to a gas-based future where they can even deal with climate change. I'm not exaggerating. If you're not following this, just look at what the CEOs of the big gas companies are saying, particularly GDF Suez, who are sort of the ringleaders in all this. So we come to fracking. The other thing the neuroscientists tell us is that when these threatened belief systems come towards the end of their lives, we are so predictably irrational that we will begin to invent collectively belief systems that are really, really flawed. And this is what people like me believe about shale. Despite what it's done in a transient, short-lived way in America, just scratch the surface and what do you find? The first thing you find is that the top 15 oil and gas industries in the shale boom in America have lost, wait for it, if you haven't heard this before, $35 billion so far and counting. Reason for this is they're drilling to bring it out of the ground at a higher cost than they can charge for the oil, for the gas and the oil together, even at the current high oil prices. So this is what Mr. Cameron wants to import into Britain. It's economic madness. They will drive themselves to bankruptcy because of their beliefs, their flawed belief systems is what we believe. Now look at, you know, the way they hype things. And here there's a parallel with the financial sector. Remember how the investment bankers used to hype mortgage-backed securities? Tell us we were all scaremongering if we question what they said. It's exactly the same thing that's happening here. You get all these reports saying there are massive amounts of shale gas. And then a few months later, we've just seen it in America, in the case of the Monterey shale, where the reserve estimate was revised down by the federal government by a somewhat inconvenient 96% just a couple of weeks ago. Again, if you're not following this drama, please do. This boom is going to turn to bust. That's what Mr. Cameron and Mr. Osborne want to import into this country. Now, fortunately, not everyone, even in their own party, is prepared to put up with this nonsense. So it's not going to happen. I predict there won't be a single producing fracked well in Britain. The question is how much damage this flawed, dysfunctional, even sick belief system can do to the technologies that really can build us a future, as the Germans and the Chinese are busy showing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat>